located near London's West End in the heart of South Kensington is the Imperial College of Science and Technology. It was established by Royal Charter in 1907 and became a school of the Federal University of London in the following year. Imperial College is now a major international university centre for teaching and research in science and technology. It has almost 5,000 students of whom nearly a third are postgraduates and there are 18 departments and five interdisciplinary centres. It is about one of these centres, the Centre for Robotics and Automated Systems, that this videotape has been made. In December 1981, the centre was established to both coordinate and instigate new interdepartmental robotics research and teaching. It is under the direction of Tom Husband, Professor of Engineering Manufacture and Head of the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Well, robotics represents a particularly important development in the whole field of industrial automation. It's also an area which calls for a very wide range of expertise in all branches of science and technology, and therefore it represents an obvious choice for specialism at Imperial College. The main purpose of the centre is to bring together from around the college all of the research and teaching in these fields. And in fact, a great many departments contribute. We offer courses at undergraduate, postgraduate and post-experience levels but our major offering is a one-year MSc course in industrial robotics and manufacturing automation. And this is really the fundamental point. Whether we are involved in teaching or in consultancy or research, the centre exists to serve the industrial as well as the academic community. Several departments are involved in this work. The Department of Computing covers new computer architectures, advanced software, programming techniques and networks. Electrical engineering is looking at microelectronic applications, special robot drives, sensors and image processing. Mechanical engineering is involved with various aspects of manufacturing, computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture, numerical control, and kinematics. The Department of Social and Economic Studies is investigating work organization and industrial relations. And the Management Science Department is heavily involved with computer simulation packages, such as the one shown here. Nevertheless, in addition to those five departments which are heavily involved in robotics work, there are several other sections of Imperial College which have an active interest and these range right across the board from astronomy who are experts in image intensification and processing to metallurgy who are interested in using robot mounted lasers to cut and process metal. There are many special facilities available to the Robotics Centre to assist it in its work, and among these is the Wolfson Microprocessor Research Support Unit, run by the Department of Computing and comprising one of the most powerful development systems in the country, designed to minimise the time spent by researchers on the microprocessor part of their work. The Robotics Centre also has access to the College Computer Centre which consists of various large mainframe systems and which can also link up with other computer centres throughout London. The Robotics Centre itself is fully backed by in-house design facilities and manufacturing facilities are available in large well-equipped workshops. There is a course room for students on the Robotics MSc course and in it is housed a technical reference library consisting of state-of-the-art books and journals on robotics plus fully referenced technical catalogues on industrial products to support design work. Still more robotics related material is available on campus from the Lyon Playfair, Science Museum and Mechanical Engineering libraries. The course room can also occasionally be used to house special projects 
such as this BRS AutoView Viking Development Vision System on loan from the SERC. Although various robots are spread throughout college, the centre has a major laboratory of its own which houses a six-axis Puma robot, a Unimate 2000, a Lansing Hitachi robot, as well as various smaller teaching type robots. There are various personal microcomputers available, a retrofitted CNC lathe and CNC milling machine, and a CNC training lathe which can be used by students to experiment with computer numerical control work. The laboratory is primarily used for research and teaching purposes and the teaching can range from coursework for the MSc to work done on short courses or by undergraduates. Each year, for example, mechanical engineering undergraduates have a design project which may well involve robotics. An undergraduate group design project, which was subsequently developed by a student as his major individual project, is this system for placing eight fulcrums and rocker arms onto the studs in a Ford Escort engine block. Performed manually, the task takes two men 20 seconds each, and Ford wondered if it could be robotized. Once up to speed, the Puma robot was actually able to perform the whole task in less than half the human time, despite the fact that it could only use one hand. Another major undergraduate project involved investigating the repeatability and overshoot of the Lansing Hitachi robot. In practical applications of such a robot, it is important to know just how accurately the arm will return to a pre-programmed point and also how much it may temporarily overshoot the point if it approaches it at speed. The technique used by the students was to employ a special cube containing three sensors mutually at right angles. When the cube is placed into a metal envelope, the output from each sensor varies depending on how far it is away from the surrounding envelope, and this variation is recorded. Before a given sensor output can be interpreted, as a specific distance, the cube must be calibrated using spaces of known thickness and then seeing what sensor output they correspond to. Once this is done, the cube can be attached to the end of the robot arm and a series of programmed movements performed, first approaching the envelope at speed from different angles to test for overshoot, and then remaining stationary for a while to measure the robot's repeatability and also to see just how still it really is. Yet another student project was designed to simulate the sensing and cleaning of radioactive contamination. The system consisted of a two-position brush surrounded by a jacket designed to suck up any debris detached by the brush. Radioactive contamination is simulated by chalk marks and the sensing is by means of a simple photodiode. The system, first of all, automatically calibrates itself using a set of marks provided for the purpose and then starts scanning the required area seeking any level of contamination above the specified value. On finding a mark, the robot scrubs it a certain number of times dependent on how dirty the area is sensed to be. It then checks the spot again and, if necessary, scrubs it some more. Eventually, it moves on, seeking any further contamination, and when the whole area has been cleaned, it rescans it to confirm that there is no remaining contamination other than that which is sensed to be at an acceptable level. In addition to the various undergraduate projects, the Robotics Centre has a major research programme. Under 50% of this work is funded by the SERC and other government bodies, with industry providing more than half of the funds in the form of formal and informal contracts for both long and short-term projects. In addition, the centre has set up three teaching company research projects run in collaboration with Lucas, Rolls-Royce and Philips. 
one of the research projects aims at using data on the failure rate of individual components making up a robot system to quantify the overall reliability of the robot and a typical cell in which it is used. For instance, this stylized robot joint can fail either because of actuator failure or because of failure of one of the two hinges. Hinge failure is a basic fault, which can be assigned an independent probability. Actuator failure, on the other hand, can in turn be caused by pipe failure, which is a basic fault, or else either by structural failure of the actuator or valve malfunction. Although these last two can be traced back still further, it is in practice possible to assign them independent failure probabilities directly. A fault tree for this joint of the arm might look like this, and using such a tree it would be possible to determine the overall probability of failure of the whole arm. There are of course potential safety hazards in using robots, and these too are being investigated at the Centre for Robotics. Although robots can be fenced off, there are occasions when humans must nevertheless come into close proximity with them, and on these occasions the humans are potentially at risk. We can see in this plan of a typical robot cell that, where the robot's maximum reach overlaps with parts of perimeter fencing, a person could become trapped or crushed. The hole in the fencing designed for components to pass through is large enough to allow a human access to the robot, so the adjacent interlocking door is of little protection. And finally, the various pickup points for components are also points at which trapping or crushing of a human could occur. Robotic assembly is predicted to become within a decade one of the major robot applications, and at the centre, a robust yet sensitive methodology is being developed which can result in cost-effective robotic assembly. That cost-effectiveness is a very much wider issue than the admittedly complex immediate problem of economic justification. It should in fact range right from the initial design of products in a way that is suited for robotic assembly, through the choice of assembly sequence, the design of the flexible assembly system layout, cycle time analysis, all the way to appropriate costing procedures which somehow take account of some of the hidden benefits which are in practice often disregarded. Out of this project has also come the development of a form of universal gripper. This omni-gripper consists of two slightly separated fingers, each consisting of an array of 8 by 16 closely spaced pins which can ride vertically up and down independently of each other. Lowering the gripper over an object pushes some pins out of the way, so creating customised fingers which mould round and fit the part. To grasp objects, either the two slightly separated fingers can be brought together to grip an object externally, or else they can be moved slightly apart from a closed position for an internal grip. In the laboratory, a prototype Omnigripper has been integrated with a Puma robot and a BBC microcomputer. Feedback from each pin of the Omnigripper allows a self-contained preprocessor to build up an image of objects beneath the gripper. This allows shapes to be taught by the robot automatically lowering the Omnigripper over a pre-named object and the preprocessor extracting the corresponding parameters. Without even using pattern recognition, however, the Omnigripper can handle a very large variety of parts, and consequently it is seen as potentially being of significant use in industry. The invention has been internationally patented, and its exploitation is currently being handled by the British Technology Group. Among the industrially sponsored work conducted by the centre is the development of a completely in-house design of robot. The robot is in the form of an anthropomorphic arm having five degrees of freedom. It has a 25 kilogram lifting capacity and a maximum gripper velocity of two meters per second. The gripper action is pneumatic and the five axes are powered by DC servo motors using chain drives. Here it is operating at about a third full speed. 
This work is in fact now being continued by Thorn EMI. It is hoped to eventually incorporate a similar Imperial College robot into a section of the main robotics laboratory. Here, a computer-controlled flexible manufacturing cell is being developed, in which the lathe and milling machine will both be controlled using the same hierarchical control system as in the college robot, which will load and unload components from the machines. Yet all that you have seen in the last 20 minutes are just some examples from the ongoing research and development program which the centre must maintain. For even as some work moves into industry, whole new areas of robotics research are only just beginning.